Hello everyone and welcome back to my practice room. Lola's thirsty. <laughs> Very spooky topic today is recorded accompaniment. If you're wondering how that topic could be spooky, I refer you to my university profs and collaborative pianists who were terrified of us students replacing the in-person collaborative pianist experience with recordings and tracks following the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there are many ways we can utilize recorded accompaniment as a tool in the practice room. And that's what I'm here to show you guys today. So what you're gonna need is your music, your instrument, which is over in that corner of my room. Uh, you're gonna need a device you can play your recorded accompaniment off of. You're gonna need the recording itself and some headphones and your other regular practice gear as well. Now you may have to purchase a backing track online. I've done that before. They're usually not very expensive, especially for the amount you will be using it. And they do tend to be of a higher quality recording as well. One composer whose piece I've played is it was a digital download online, so I did that. And there was also a backing track available with the sheet music on his website, so that was really nice. There are two big ways that I use recorded accompaniment in my practice room. Obviously, individual practice. This is what I'm going to show you guys in a minute, is I put in my headphones and I practice performing the music by myself in the practice room with the backing track in my ear to sort of simulate that collaborative pianist rehearsal time, yeah. I promise you guys, you will cut your actual in-person collaborative pianist rehearsal time in half, which also means you're cutting your bill in half, and isn't that what we're all about? Now, the second way I use recorded accompaniment is with mock performances. If you get some friends that are really good friends with you and don't mind listening to a mock performance of yours, you can put on the backing track on a speaker and practice performing the piece for your friends before you go on stage for a larger and more strange audience. I, I don't mean like strange in terms of weird, I mean strange and in terms of lots of strangers in the audience. I'm gonna put my flute together and I'll get my track all set up. Today I will be showing you guys this recorded accompaniment technique using the hamburger sonata, but the first movement this time. Perfect timing, because we're having hamburgers for dinner tonight. <laughs> Music, headphones, instrument, device to play my recording on. You don't have to listen to it with headphones. I honestly cannot hear very well. It's kind of it's kind of an issue. I was in the middle of telling you about where to get your recording when I got off track. Back to where to get your recording. For this particular piece and for many others, I was able to find a recording for free on YouTube. If you're a person on a budget like myself, definitely check YouTube first. I literally just put in the search bar hamburger sonata backing track or, you know, hamburger sonata piano accompaniment and that usually tends to do the trick. Recordings tend to come in like a slowed down version for practice and the performance tempo, so there's usually more than one track to pick from. Sometimes two people will have recorded the same accompaniment. So it's totally up to you to decide which video you like better, but make sure you like like that video or add it to watch later or something so that you don't lose it. If you're getting it off a website, they send the download to your email or whatever. Make sure you get that on your phone or your iPad, whatever you're using for 
practice just so you don't have to get all the way to your practice room just to realize that the the recording you plan to play with is on your laptop which is what you left 15 minutes behind you at, at your apartment and now you're in the practice room and you have to practice something else or just you know for spontaneous practice reasons also for bringing to your lesson I used to bring recorded accompaniment to my lessons and so it needed to be super accessible or my teacher would just be over it I was almost pushing for live actual performances to be allowed a recorded accompaniment for financial purposes. If we want to talk maybe about the future of modern performance, I feel like recorded accompaniment could play an awesome role. Not many other professionals in the industry who I've met agree with me on this and they think that Recordings should only be played in performance if it is like part of the composer's written score, right? That's how it's a scary topic because it's very controversial having recorded accompaniment. There are channels on YouTube that specialize in recorded accompaniment. We've got My Pianist, Color is the Piano. I believe the channel name is something like orchestral backing tracks or something but as I said just use the search function that'll probably be a lot quicker than scrolling through these channel videos. You also might be able to reach out to a collaborative pianist and ask if you can pay for them to create a recording for you. I want to do a mock performance for you of the first movement of the Hamburger Sonata. See I'm kind of like combining my my two techniques here because it's individual practice in my practice room but it's also a mock performance. We'll see how I play and then I guess we'll talk a bit about it after. My pianist has a video here for me. That's the one I've been using. I've not warmed up at all so should be should be fun. I like his slow track better than his fast track. Some of the notes really fly in this first movement and you wouldn't expect it. No. Comment down below, tell me if you enjoy hearing my mistakes or if you think they're boring and lame and I should cut them out. Without further ado... <laughs> nope. I need to restart because there's one more tip and that is turn up your volume all the way. <laughs> The accompaniment for this is actually really bare. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to put it together with the piano, especially the second movement.
I'm totally off. I scrolled back through the recording to where the second half of the piece begins, and I'm going to try it again. practice room so that you aren't wasting time in your rehearsal with your pianist. Going into your rehearsal, you kind of know the spots where you're likely to mess up and you might have even already fixed them. I knew going into this, it had been a while since I'd played the first movement. I really just picked it up like that out of nowhere. I told myself I was going to practice some of those 30 second note sections before I came in to do this video for you guys, but I didn't because I decided to practice something else instead. Don't make my mistake. That's kind of the beauty of it is you get to play with the pianist as many times as you want and that time doesn't keep adding on top of your rehearsal bill. As I kind of mentioned before, practicing with the recorded accompaniment will show you which sections you are likely to mess up on. Which means, before you go into your rehearsal with your real pianist, you can practice extra hard on those sections to make sure you don't mess up in the rehearsal. It's not about not messing up in the rehearsal, because that's fine. It's totally okay to mess up in rehearsal. It's more about using the time with your pianist efficiently. Even after just one run through, that could be a lot of your rehearsal time gone. If it's a half hour rehearsal and you do one through one run through, that could very well be a third of your time. So as I'm saying, you really can't waste time in those precious rehearsals with your collaborative pianist because you only get so few before you actually go on stage. Recorded accompaniment is also awesome in that you can learn to pivot during a performance. For example, there were several times in my retry of the second section where I got off from the recording, I stopped playing and listened to see where the pianist was in the music so that I could jump back on in the correct place because 
the recording isn't going to stop for you and honestly your collaborative pianist in real life should not have to stop for you either. I guess a big downside to recorded accompaniment is that it can affect your phrasing a lot. For example, there's lots of places this recording slows down, particularly around cadence points where I don't really feel like the music should be slowing down. I hear the recap very smoothly in my head. I just really want the music to seamlessly transition into that recap. But when I just played it with the recorded accompaniment, the recap sounded very choppy to me and I took an extra breath where I really do not want to be breathing. But also, like, your in real life pianist could affect that as well. I know I've had experiences where the pianist inserts their musical ideas and feelings into the music and that's not really what I want to play but you always have to be very nice and gentle to your pianist because they do a lot uh, for us, for those of us who need to be accompanied. I don't have any more time to talk about recorded accompaniment today. Thank you for practicing with me. Go practice with the recorded accompaniment. Let me know how it goes in the comments. Here's your reminder to like, subscribe, uh, comment, and share it. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye!